I want to thank each one of you for being part of Sci-Fi 2020. This was the first digital avatar of this annual event and I hope you found it as engaging and engrossing as in its previous iterations. I also want to thank all the speakers and presenters who participated over the past five days and who have lent their expertise and perspectives to a very important subject. I want to take this opportunity to thank my co-chair Trisha Ray for curating this very important and extensive event and for her leadership in putting it all together. I want to thank my colleague Leticia who was in charge of the sci-fi short form and long form publications and she has been able to rally in views and the written word from different continents. I want to thank our digital producer and our director Akhil who has made sure that this platform was made available across all our social media uh, handles and we are delighted that over a million viewers have watched what we have put together. Well done Akhil and well done to our digital team. Finally, let me thank all my colleagues at ORF including the administration team and others for supporting us in making this happen. In the next few minutes, I want to share 10 takeaways for me from this version of sci-fi. The first, China's rise is extremely consequential. It will change our world and it is bigger than the political moment we see in America. And even as China emerges, what is also true is the complete disarray of the old Atlantic order. There are divisions within Europe and there are divisions across the Atlantic. Will they get their act together in time is the central question, the central geopolitical poser for all of us. Authoritarian tech is at the gates and we need to find resolve to respond to it. My second takeaway that globalization will be both clumsy and promiscuous. Decoupling will be even more difficult. There is a simplistic assumption that you can decouple your data world from the real world. Countries will demand quid pro quo. When you exclude entities from digital prosperity, it will be difficult to sell old trading relations to them. What emerges for as commerce and as connectivity in the future will have a different texture. It will certainly be more complicated. My third takeaway, there is a new and interesting dynamic emerging between democracies and technology. If you tame technologies, can democracies survive is the question my colleague and friend Maritya Shake has posed so eloquently. On the other hand, if you don't regulate technologies, can democracy survive? The answers are unclear, but it is certainly true that the protection of the public sphere, the integrity of political regimes and the purity of conversations must be a common aspiration regulation, incentives, ethics or norms. We will have to dig deep into our toolkit to come up with answers that would ensure and allow this to happen. The fourth idea that came across quite clearly over the past five days was a relationship between big companies, technology and societies. Accountable boardrooms is now an expectation and will soon be a reality. What shape that will take will be defined by the debates we have had here at Sci-Fi and many other conversations taking place in different parts of the world. One thing is certain, large companies having dominance and influence will need to be more responsive to communities they serve. The texture of governance will have to be colored by the locality they serve and the nature of rules and norms they frame will have to be contextual and culturally sensitive. Corporate governance is never going to be the same again. Besides the boardrooms, we cannot ignore the role of coders, of programmers in Bangalore, in Silicon Valley, in Poland and other parts of the world. We cannot have coders galloping as the new cowboys in the wild west of the technology realm. We also need accountable algorithms. Black box responses to societal events is not enough. The fifth takeaway is the enduring impact of the pandemic 
on our earlier digital debates. Our appreciation of privacy has changed. The ownership of data will dramatically alter. The questions around the control of state over technology devices, products and services has been altered. The role of big corporations in our lives is fundamentally different. We eat, we consume, we communicate and we integrate using technology. We must strengthen our resolve to defend individual choice, freedom, rights, retain ownership of our data and ensure the value we create serves we the people. The sixth idea and in fact a project is waiting to be undertaken. The world needs a new social contract, a digital social contract. When work and workspaces have altered, when the terms of contract and employment have changed, when the format of social protection and minimum wage is being discussed and debated, the responsibility of the state, of big corporates and indeed audiences and citizens will have to be redescribed. We will have to ensure that we are able to offer the three P's that all seek, paychecks, protection and purpose. And alongside the three P's, we will need to offer ladders to those who have been marginalized by history. This process has begun. This debate has been initiated. Details need to be discovered. And we heard the reiteration, the seventh takeaway at Sci-Fi, the reiteration of the post-truth world, the darkest shade of grey in the chrome age, misinformation, disinformation, fake news are now widespread and are being used to destabilize businesses, political systems, social cohesion, communities, families and individuals. Intermediary liability, the role of big tech companies, the treatment of big platforms as media or not as media are old and passe. If they are the curators of information, they have to be held to certain standards of performance. Global information systems require new guarantors. And if the big tech companies cannot do it, the public will have to devise new methods to get there. Our public sphere cannot be undermined by corporate profits. But in the Fifty Shades of Grey, we finally saw some light and some light. We also saw hope. We also heard of optimism. We also heard of this moment, this technology moment, where communities are beginning to change their futures. In Asia, in Africa, and even in the developed world, people are discovering and in fact nurturing and shaping new aspirations and goals for themselves using the device they hold and they own. We heard from governments and their deployment of technology to deliver governance. We heard from businesses on how they have used what they have built to respond to the pandemic. We have heard, we have heard from women on how they have seen and seized this moment to gain and retain agency. And we have heard from the users and their hopes that have been built and that are being built on the promise of technology. The fourth industrial revolution will be driven by positive tech and we must all commit to it. This was the eighth takeaway and the brightest one at Sci-Fi 2020. Even amidst the failing and flailing global international order, there were voices that expressed hope and centrality of smaller groupings regionalism and regional orders, alliances of democracies, plurilateral arrangements. All of these systems, all of these engagements, all of these platforms were seen to be sufficient and important to tide us over this period of turbulence in the international order. As the pandemic has taught us to be more modest, perhaps it is the period of modesty for the multilateral system as well. It is time to build slowly with smaller groups and hopefully achieve a larger working and efficient international system. The role of the EU, the role of the ASEAN, 
the role of democracies to strengthen and defend norms and laws associated with technology of today and tomorrow were expressed quite loudly and clearly. And finally, my tenth takeaway, a fact, a panel and a publication. The fact, we were delighted to have over 50% women speakers at Sci-Fi 2020. And kudos to team Trisha and our tech team for reaching out and making sure this happened. My favorite panel, pushing the boundaries of Indian tech, women on the front line. And my favorite publication of the same name, which captures this new moment that all of us must strengthen. This post-pandemic world offers all of us, men, women and others, an opportunity to build a more diverse, a more inclusive digital order. Mask up, stay safe, stay connected.